What's going on guys? No, no checking in. Yet another video with author, counselor, depression survivor, good friend, spiritual advisor, Douglas Block. Douglas, go ahead and say hi. Hi everybody. We are continuing a series that you guys have seen on this channel. I've been featuring Doug for years now on this channel. He is invaluable to me. He can be to you as well. Today we're going to talk about taming the inner critic. If you're anything like me, when you're down, when you're depressed, when life ails you, sometimes you can become um, negatively and overly critical of yourself in a way that, that doesn't help. So let's go ahead and get into the questions. Uh, what is the inner critic and does it relate to being depressed? The inner critic, as I'm going to read, is the negative inner voice that constantly judges, criticizes, negates, and attacks us. And how does it relate to being depressed? Well, we talked about in the last video on affirmations, and, or building self-esteem through affirmations, right. that most people or many people with depression suffer from low self-esteem. Or if you've got someone hammering on you all the time, you know, calling you names and putting you down, you're going to feel pretty low. So the inner critic contributes to the negative self-esteem that many people with depression feel. What are some of the things that the inner critic says? Right. Oh, I wrote down some, some beautiful things. Comparing yourself to others' achievements and abilities. Oh, my God, yes. You know, why can't you be more like your brother? You know, I used to, when I was depressed, well, look at my friends. They're making millions of dollars. I'm sitting in here in a, you know, in, in a hospital. What's wrong with me, right? Sure. Uh, keeping track of your failures, but never reminding you of anything you did well. Uh, calling you names like stupid or incompetent or weak or selfish or defective. I remember my mother used to say, God bless her, you were just born sick. Ooh, that just sounds horrible. It's horrible. Uh, blaming yourself for things that go wrong. And setting impossible standards of perfection. You know, we know we all know people who are perfectionists, like ourselves, right? And if you don't meet that thing perfectly, then you're a loser. So I mean, it's a, it's a hard taskmaster. It really is a hard task to master. I, I think it's something that's difficult for people that aren't depressed. I think for people that are depressed or anxious, it becomes that much yeah, more. Yeah, I difficult. think there's a lot of people with anxiety. I think you know we really need to talk about the fact that people with OCD and you know I think people who are always trying to to strive to do something perfectly have more anxiety than depression. Sure. So, so, you know, my channel is really about depression and anxiety, and so is yours. Right. We've both dealt with both. They're like a twin-headed monster. Absolutely. And you and I have both suffered from agitated depression. Comorbid. So we have to deal with both. Comorbid, 80% comorbid, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. All right, let's keep it going. Um, where does the inner critic come from? Uh, the inner critic is usually comes from some internalized parental or authority figure that put us down when we were a child. The psychologists say that 70 to 75 percent of the messages we get from parents and authority figures are negative, unfortunately. And now the problem is, is that when a person is young, before the age of seven, uh, they don't have that filter, that rational mind filter. They can say, "Oh, this is bunk." They just take in everything and absorb it like a sponge. Sure. Maria Montessori used to say, "People have the absorbent mind." This is why the Catholic Church used to say, give us a child before he is the age of seven and he is ours for life. Oh, that God. early programming is really deep. Sure. Now, once you go beyond seven, that stuff is in there and you don't need the parents or the authority figures to, to you know, give you the program. You're, you're, you're now reinforcing it. Right. You're the one who's keeping it up. Right. So the, the bad news is that you're on automatic pilot. The, the good news is because you're the one doing it, you're the one who can stop it. Sure. Okay. Um, how does the inner critic impact us? I think you want, and we're going to both give examples. examples. Well, how does the inner critic impact you? Well, again, for me, when I was depressed and I kept comparing myself to other people who graduated from school with me, you know, I was just as smart as they were. I was just as motivated. But they were, you know, making things in the world and I wasn't. So I just, I just, I just beat myself up because I couldn't do what they were doing. Sure. But I forgot to remind myself that I have a brain disorder that they don't. It's like, it's like saying, well... You only have one leg, you should be able to run as fast as someone with, with two. Right. And because depression is invisible, we don't think of ourselves as having you know, a disability or, or being mm -hmm. under some sort of, you know, we're not disabled people. We have a disability and we have to just remind ourselves that that's there. And it wasn't our fault, so don't, don't blame yourself. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's like reading or hearing my own thoughts. Um, I think if I could reiter reiterate anything, I would probably just say something along the lines of when I was depressed, I, I judged myself uh, when comparing myself to people Absolutely. that seemingly were not depressed. And I think it kept me in a place of constant depression and made it harder for me to take the steps necessary to heal because I saw other people living and behaving in a certain way and thought I should be able just to do that. And it took more of like the acceptance that I had a condition and, and I was going to have to be more forgiving of myself and Absolutely. not so critical. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a really great topic. It's something I think I, I imagine everybody has been too critical for, of themselves from time to time. So how can we reverse this process? Well, in my book and <clears throat> on the website, I outline mm -hmm. a three-step process. Uh, the first is to become aware that the critic exists, and it helps to name the critic. So I'm going to read to you some of the things my clients, like yourself, have, have, have the names they've given. Uh, sure. 
uh, bully, critic, judge, Mr. and Mrs. Perfect, parent's name, Mr. Kickass, hard ass. Just, you know, you know, give it some name so you, sure. you can personify it. And then pay attention to your self-talk. And when you start to feel bad about yourself, oh, that must be the inner critic calling, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm putting, I must be putting myself down. Why do I feel so crappy? Right. And, and, and you might hear something like, again, you know, oh, you can't make it. Or why is Johnny doing better than you? Of course. And then the third thing to do is, of course, in cognitive therapy, take the negative voice and replace it immediately with something positive. Right. You know? I am doing the best I can. It really wasn't my fault I'm depressed. You know, I'm a courageous person facing a difficult condition. So, you know, and, and also before that, I, I need to remember, so the first thing you do is you say shut up or cancel, cancel. Absolutely. First you negate the, the negative voice and then you replace it with a positive. So first say, hey, stop that. No, it's not true. And then you replace it with what is true. If I might interject here, um, something that has been said of me by doctors and therapists in the past is that I am more negative or overly critical towards myself more more than I realize. So I right. think it's important to to be perceptive of the idea right. that maybe you are being overly critical. Because for me, for the longest time, I didn't realize I was being so hard on myself, or that it was it was so uh, self defeating to do so. And once that was uh, an identified thing, right. it made it a little easier to start challenging. Right. Absolutely. So. Um, but that was just me. I just I, I kind of was in denial about how. Now, you know, you know. Being. Again, people who are depressed tend to blame themselves more than than, than they should. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are some examples of of ways to tame the inner critic? Well, I gave you that three step process. Right. There's a couple of other ways. You actually mentioned one of them. The whole idea of self acceptance and forgiveness. Sure. We have to do a video on acceptance. It is so big. You know, you have to realize that. Hey. Uh, I accept the, myself the way I am with my limitations, and I'm, I am really doing the best I can. And it's not my fault that I'm in this pickle. Of course. Uh, the other thing is that uh, sometimes medications can be, be very helpful, mm. uh, you know, especially to quiet down the negative voices. And then, of course, there's psychotherapy and counseling. In other words, what I'm saying is that you can't just use affirmations or positive self-talk. It's really you need pro-help. Well, especially if it comes to family of origin issues, abuse, neglect. Right. You know, it's really hard stuff. You need, you need again, the ally, this time the therapist, to help you sort through that. And you need to be reparented. And, and that's what therapy can really do for people is reparenting. It's hey, you point. now have the therapist that is a loving voice of unconditional love and acceptance you never got as a kid. Right. So, again, reach out for support. Call in the troops when you need help. And uh, that, that will make these tools much more effective. So you... You are deserving of love. You know, the inner critic is wrong. It's false. Pay no attention to it. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Of course. The Wizard of Oz, right? Of course. That is the inner critic. He is a mirage. He is an illusion. Your basic nature is good and whole and perfect and loving. And don't let anybody, including yourself, tell you any differently. It's a, it's a beautifully, or excuse me, that was beautifully put. And I think I, if I could add one little caveat that comes to mind for me, is I think for some people it's really hard to admit that maybe you do need that extra level of help and care, oh. or that there is some retooling to do. Um, and I just encourage everyone, if you can, if you have the capacity, to, to allow yourself that extra help and, and not don't see it as a sign of weakness, but rather as one of the strongest things you could ever do for yourself is admit you need it. When so. I wrote a book on, on uh, affirmations for kids, and I did a lot of research in three years, I found out that the number one trait that's, that helped children who had been abused survive was the ability to reach out for help. The kids who basically broke through the wall of silence and reached out, you know, and, and violated the, the par parent uh, rule of don't talk, don't tell. Sure. Uh, they were the ones who, who made it out there. So it's just like you came to my group. If you hadn't come to the group, you might not be here today. And that no, wasn't about true. my group. That was about your willingness to get help and to admit you needed it. Absolutely. Thanks, Doug. You're welcome.